Hello, welcome to this presentation. I'm so happy to have you. I hope you enjoy it. So our topic today is about Fripti Classroom. And our learning objective today will be as following. By the end of this session, you should be able to, first of all, define what is flipped classroom. Second, explain four pillars of flipped classroom. Third, describe four components of flipped classroom. Four, explain six steps of implementing flipped classroom. And five, explain why you should use flipped classroom. And finally, um, create or implement presentation in flipped classroom. But last also, since this is instruction technology class, we are going to identify tools or technologies for flipped classroom. So before we go further, what do you already know about flipped classroom? Good. Now, look at this picture here. This summarizes the concept of crypt uh, crypt Fripti classroom. So basically, flipped classroom is divided in two main parts, in class and out of class. So, and there are three activities or things students should do in class and out of class. So basically, it starts with out of class. So out of class, student will start preparing for class by going through the material, the content, which is this video, which uh, you're watching now. And when you come in class, we are going to practice and apply the key concepts you learned in this presentation. And finally, after class, or which it will be now out, uh, out, out of class, you should check your understanding and extend your learning by uh, performing more activities on the tools we are going to look on Fripti Classroom. Now, tell me, before this presentation, have you heard about Fripti Classroom? Did you hear about Fripti Classroom before this presentation? Now, what is Flipped Classroom? Flipped Classroom is a teaching approach in which traditional ideas about classroom activities and homework are devised, or you can say are flipped. So in this approach, teachers have students interact with new content as homework before class. Then they use class time to discuss the new information and put those ideas in practice. For our case, when we come in classroom after um, you have watched this video, we are going to uh, uh, try to use some technological tools for implementing Fripti Classroom. 
Now fill on, fill this question, complete this question. There are four pillars of flipped classroom. These pillars are flexible environment, where teacher create a flexible environment for learning. Second, learning culture. Three, inten intentional content. You have to intentionally choose content which can be uh, taught through this approach. And lastly, professional educators. In this um, approach, teacher really need to um, put their profession in practice because you have to prepare activities to send out as a video, which is like the one you're watching. This will be before the class. And when you come to class, you have to lead your students to practice or to put in practice what they have learned, to try ideas, to try technologies and so on. And when we talk of um, learning culture, here a uh, teacher should encourage um, and create um, and, and encourage each student to love learning, to like learning in different ways. And flex, uh, flexible environment, here we mean that the learning environment in this approach is flexible. That is why you can sit and watch uh, this video of my presentation at your room. You can watch it in library. You can watch it anywhere, anytime. Answer this question now. Then, let us see the components of flipped classroom. We have four components, main components for flipped classrooms. The first component is video correction. Uh, this approach encourages to use uh, video, audios, pictures, and so on. Basically, this should be collection of different materials. So you collect videos. You can make your own video. You can search for video in YouTube or other uh, websites, which relates to what you're going to teach. And also the second component is digital slideshow. Presenting or um, um, recording your, your slideshow presentation and sending it to your student as video, like the one you're watching now. And another component is student discussion. When we come to class, when we meet in class, be it in person, be it virtually, we are going to discuss the content which you're watching now. And the last component is teacher-student communication, online communication. Because you are going to watch this material at your home or anywhere where you are, if you don't understand anything, if you have question, you can reach out to me and I can help you regarding those questions. So communication is important. Now, answer this question, just to check your knowledge. Let us now see how we can implement flipped classrooms. We have a number of steps. Step one, plan. In planning, you have to figure out which lesson you want to flip. Then you have to outline the, the key learning outcomes and also choose technology which you're going to use for this um, lesson. Second step, the uh, code. You have to record your presentation. Instead of doing it in a person, you have to record it and send it to your student. 
So step three is sharing that video. That is the sending of the video you have rec recorded for uh, presentation. Now you share this video to, with your students. Your students can watch this video at any time they want. You have to share that video before class time, some days before class time, so that each student will have time to watch your video and go through all the material you suggested for them to uh, read or to search. And the next step, step four, is to change. Now, because your student will have viewed your lesson before class time, they are prepared to actually go more in dips than ever before. They have at least knowledge on the material already. So in classroom, you have to go deep. To have, you have to, 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 to lead them to explore more, to think more of the material and do a lot of activities for them to uh, make sure that they learn what you're intending to, uh, for them to learn. Step five, group. Uh, an effective way to make discussion um, so interesting and effective is to group your students in small groups so that they can have um, engaging discussion of the content. And this can be done in class and also even before class if you can intend to do so. So you can give them activities um, depending on what you're teaching, but it can be writing activity, it can be praying, um, something or it can be making a video or solving any problem depending on what you're teaching. Step six, regroup. So after the student has um, worked in group, now you can regroup them by bringing them back to the, uh, to the whole class so that they can share uh, their individual groups work with the other students. Then allow students to ask questions. You can also, you as a teacher, ask them questions. Dive deeper than ever before to just to make that learning is effective and they really think, think, and explore more about the content. Now remember that after going through these six steps, you will need to review and revise. And when you have time to teach this topic again, you will have revised your uh, presentation and make, make it better than before. Now, do this activity in a collaborative collaborative board. Good. Now, uh, I think you have learned about Bloom's taxonomy. Now, flipped classroom really uh, fit well or relate well with what we call revised Bloom's taxonomy. Um, this revised Bloom's taxonomy, as you see, uh, the triangle is pointing down, but the original uh, Bloom's ta taxonomy triangle is pointing up. So what you see here, uh, let us start with the triangle first. The triangle here we have what Bloom's taxon Bloom's call the levels of learning. Starting on top is the lowest level of learning. 
And on the bottom is the highest level of learning. So remembering <clears throat> is all about just remembering any information you have learned. So you teach um, your student to the point of just enabling them to remember whatever you're teaching. Understanding, this goes more than just remembering, but understanding the content in a wide and uh, yeah, more deep, more than just remembering. Applying, applying is about putting in practice what you have learned. So you teach students to the point of being able to apply the knowledge to do whatever you have told them uh, to do. Analyzing is about now um, like uh, segmenting different components in the in a in a in a, in, in a body of knowledge or in a top let's say now picking various um, components or elements within that one body of uh, of knowledge of con or content and showing um, how they relate to each one, to each other. Evaluation. Evaluation, it is about evaluating a specific content. You evaluate, you don't just remember or understand it, but you understand it and you're able to analyze it. Now you go above more than that the point of trying to evaluate. When we evaluate, we are looking at the, like, the, the benefits and the disadvantages of something. Oh, we are also uh, looking uh, on what is beneficial or not beneficial in that uh, board of content. And the last the last uh, level is creating. Creating here, you ask student to create something new, depending on what they have learned. Let's say you're teaching English language and art. You have uh, been uh, maybe you have given your student a story for them to lead. Now, you can take them through different uh, levels of learning. For example, when you just want to measure at the level of remembering, you can just ask students to mention maybe names of characters in the story and mention events which happened in the story. And when it comes to understanding, you ask uh, questions which are more difficult than that. Maybe you ask, why did someone do this? Then they can uh, reply. Now, applying and analyzing is in between there. Let me go to the to this highest level, when it comes to creating. Now you ask students to write their own story. You give them a topic and ask them to write about that topic. They are not just reading and trying to remember specific information and whatever, but now you are asking them to write their own story based on the topic you have given them. Now. This relates to the flipped classroom. Now look here on the left hand. You see that, before we go there, let us go to the right hand. You see the three top levels which are remembering, understanding, and applying uh, considered to be 
lower order of thinking and learning. But the other three levels, which are analyzing, evaluating, and creating, are considered to be higher order of thinking and learning. Now let us go to the left hand here. You remember the different activities students do before, do during classroom and after classroom. Now, anything students will do before classroom will fall under the two top levels of, uh, of uh, learning, which is remembering and understanding. So when they watch the video you have created as you're watching now, your, uh, your level of learning is just at the level of remembering and understanding, remembering the information provided and understanding that information, you end there. Now, during the classroom, when we meet in classroom, be it in person or visually, we try to apply what you have learned in my presentation and then we try to analyze. So you see that we are going to, to, to we are going to deeper level than the two previous levels of learning. So for this case, when we meet in classroom, we are actually going to try to create some um, uh, presentation which we can share with our students in a form of flipped classroom. So I will ask you, be it in group um, and sometimes maybe individually later, uh, I will ask you to create a presentation, a mini presentation and we are going also to analyze some uh, ideas or some concept in our content. Now, after class, after class, I'll give you some assignments. These assignments will fall on the last two levels of learning on the bottom which is about evaluating and creating. For example, I'll give you as part of your assignment or project to create a flipped presentation of your uh, subject you, you, you like to teach and topic of your choice. So that will be at the level of creating. Now you will create a presentation which will be implemented in this approach of Flipty Classroom. We will have time to discuss more on this if you have questions. Now here are some tools. Tools or technologies which you can use for Flipty Classroom. These are just suggestions. We have a lot of technologies which can be used for 50 classrooms. So here, I'm just giving you some suggestion. You can explore more and you will find that we have a lot of tools. Neopod is one of these tools we will explore. Um, Preypost is another tool. Flipgrid is another tool, Brainy Pop, Khan Academy, and there are many, many more. Now, I would like you to explore on these tools. Not all, you can pick one or two, um, it's good, but I really encourage that one of these tools should be Neopod, and you can pick another one from the list or you, if you have time, you can explore more, or you can explore all of this and see how they works. Mm. Well, 
benefits. Now, what are the benefits for using this approach? One of the benefits is that this approach is application-based. When I say application-based, I mean that it really encourages students to learn by doing. Learning by doing. Second benefit is that it includes all forms of learning. That is, when you prepare your presentation, you will have some content presented as video, you will have some content presented as visual, etc. Some content pre presented as texty, etc. Another benefit is convenient. This method allows students to access content visually or in person. Also, students, uh, this approach is student-centered. So in student-centered, we have student as center of the learning process. So students are actively learning in this approach. Benefit five, this approach allows differentiated learning. You remember a uh, few weeks ago, we learned about differentiated learning. So this approach allows differentiated learning in that when you get in the class, because you have already gone through the presentation. Now, the teacher or the instructor is not busy presenting the content, but trying to help you to implement, to perform various activities. Benefit six, it gives teacher opportunity to deal with student difficulties during classroom. So you can help st your students if they are facing any difficulty to implement or to perform the activity you are giving them. Now do this question, just to check your knowledge. But this approach also has some limitations and criticism from other scholars. So one of the limitation is that some student may not have access to computer or video viewing technology outside of the school. This can be one of the challenge. Uh, maybe some student may not have access to internet, things like that. Another challenge is that it, it can increase preparation time for teachers. You need to record the video, you need to post the video, you need to search um, various videos and put them together in your presentation and so on. So it can increase preparation time. Now watch this video as a way of reviewing uh, what we have learned so far then you will, after watching this video, then you will go to this site and read more about Philippi Classroom. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to seeing you in class next week.